It's Anna from the University of Reunion Island that will talk about sustainable strategies and low emission pathways in small island developing states. You're working on a cost optimization approach for the integration of renewables in Mar Mauritius. Please. Hi, everyone. Thank you very much for the introduction. Um, I am now going to share my screen with you. Um, can you see it? Yes. Yes. Great. Well, we see your, uh, yeah, no, we saw your notes also, also not the full screen. Is it working now? No, we don't see the full screen. Uh, okay, I'm gonna try again. Is it okay now? Or still? Um, we still see your sort of the your notes and the next slide. So I think you could choose uh, the second screen. Maybe. Press F five. <laughs> okay, I'll try one more time. So I could now go to work. Is it better? Perfect. Please. Be great. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. I am Anna. Uh, I am a PhD student at the University of Reunion. So I will be talking about um, the sustainable energy and climate mitigation pathways in the Republic of Mauritius. So this is a work in progress, and I have been collaborating with some researchers from uh, the Center for Applied Mathematics. So a bit of um, context before moving on to the methodology. Um, what really motivated uh, this study is that um, part of my thesis focuses on the assessment of um, energy vulnerability in small island developing states. So we developed an energy vulnerability index, which is based on um, eight sub indicators, including, for instance, energy and fault dependency, energy mixed diversity, and so on. So one of the key findings of this study was that uh, substantial efforts were required from small island developing states on the environmental dimension. So the carbon intensity of primary energy was the main contributing factor to energy vulnerability. So from there, um, one of the main solutions identified were triggering the energy transition, which is um, which whose main driver is climate change, of course. So Moving from energy vulnerability to energy transition, um, so despite facing ongoing challenges associated with heavy dependence on fossil fuels, high energy costs, and limited capacity, uh, small island developing states um, still continue to show strong political um, commitment and leadership by setting rather ambitious energy and, and climate targets. Um, so we argue that triggering that energy transition in those islands um, uh, will benefit SIDS in two main ways. Uh, first of all, mitigating en energy vulnerability by improving their overall performance on um, the different sub-indicators identified, but also by reducing their GSG emissions to mitigate climate change. So we're focusing on the Republic of Mauritius, which comprises of mainland Mauritius and the island of the Drake. So on uh, the left, this figure shows that historically, um, like in most SIDS, Mauritius uh, power generation mix uh, is mainly dominated by fossil fuels, including coal and heavy fuel oil. So in 2009, the power generation mix was mainly sourced from fossil fuels at 78%, and the remaining from renewable uh, sources, including uh, bagas, which was the main um, renewable energy uh, source for the island. And when we look at the Drake's island, so the conclusion is still the same. Uh, the power mix is dominated by fossil fuel at 94% in 2019. So we can see that there is substantial, um, sub substantial, um, um, substantial, um, how do I say that? Um, substantial potential for both islands to transition from a fossil fuel-based 
uh, dominated power generation mix to uh, set on a more sustainable and low carbon pathway. So a brief overview of the policy milestones in the Republic of Mauritius. Um, in 2009, the government released its long-term energy strategy, which is the LTES, um, which mainly focused on the integration of renewable energy and stated, um, established rather 35% um, oil penetration target by, two, by 2025. And then in 2015, along with other countries, uh, the Republic of Mauritius signed the Paris Agreement and through its nationally determined contribution, pledged to reduce its 30 GSG, um, its GSG emissions by 30%. And also in 2019, uh, the government released a rather comprehensive renewable energy roadmap for 2030, again, focusing on renewable energy integration um, and um, putting forward the major role that will be played by uh, biomass and solar PV in the energy transition. And uh, for 2030, as you can see, there is 100% um, eye penetration in red. Well, I put it in red because uh, in Rodrigue's Island, uh, this was more of a political promise instead of a uh, a firmly established target. So um, between 2019 and 2013, uh, we have what I call the normative approach based on the established energy and climate targets. But then what about uh, 2050? What about beyond 2030? So we are going to adopt uh, an exploratory approach uh, from 2030 onwards uh, to 2050. So um, focusing on both climate energy, uh, climate and uh, energy targets, uh, we thought it would be interesting to investigate the impacts of both targets on the future evolution of the power generation mix in the Republic of Mauritius and try to determine which of the two is actually uh, most likely capable of shaping a secure and sustainable energy future for the island, for both islands. A quick overview of existing studies on the Republic of Mauritius. Well, of the four studies, Waste 2004 was the only one focusing on the rates, so all of which was not really a cost optimization bottom up model. Uh, Waste gave key elements on the uh, critical technologies that would be required to set Rodrigues on a sustainable um, energy pathway. And the three remaining studies uh, focused mainly on Mauritius. And one of the key findings of these studies is that solar PV and biomass are going to play a central role in the energy transition uh, in Mauritius, uh, given that um, any blue technologies such as storage technologies, including batteries and uh, pumped hydro, are made available. So regarding our contributions, we provide updated insights into the long-term power system modeling, uh, particularly for Drake since uh, the early study of waste in 2004. We also uh, model the power sector specificities uh, of both islands because uh, they do differ in terms of supply, in terms of demand, and in terms of network density. For instance, in Mauritius, uh, the economy is mainly based on the service sector and has adopted an output-oriented strategy. So most of the electricity demand is coming from the commercial and the industrial sector. And uh, um, for instance, in Rodrigues, the residence, residential sector is the main uh, primary consumer of electricity. So we do extend the discussion beyond policy milestones to provide further insights into the future um, evolution of the power, power systems. In, on both islands, and we also investigate uh, the CO2 emissions trajectories. So, a quick overview of the ROM Times model, uh, which is a bottom up cost optimization model. Um, so, the, we have one model with two regions, Mauritius and Rodrigues, and the modeling horizon spans between uh, from 2019 to 2050. Since our model is relatively uh, small, we uh, represent each generating unit. We have 20 times sizes for both islands. Electricity demand is exogenous and has been computed 
uh, in an average study to estimate the elasticities of electricity demand. And we focus on the LTES and the, I mean, energy target and uh, climate policy targets, and we apply 8% um, general discount rate to the model. So briefly, the scenarios that have been investigated in the study uh, include the baseline scenario where no NDC targets are uh, reached and no policy intervention um, are made to correct uh, the current trends. Um, so two constraint scenarios include the 35RE, which models the 35RE, 35% uh, RE penetration by 2025. So that's for the normative phase. And then for the exploratory phase beyond 2030, we model an additional 15 percentage points of RE penetration. As for the 30 GHG scenario, where, the, we, where we assume that the NDC target for 20, 2030 will be achieved, uh, that, uh, that's for the normative uh, phase, that is a uh, reduction of uh, GHG emissions by 30%. And then for the exploratory phase, we uh, model an additional 20 percentage point reduction in CO2 emissions. Now, moving on to the results. Um, so this is the future generation mix for Mauritius uh, in the baseline scenario. So what we can see is that the BAU scenario naturally integrates uh, renewable energy, even without policy intervention. And but coal and um, coal and coal bagasse uh, power plants still play an important role, uh, particularly at the end of a modeling horizon. One of the main reasons is to accommodate for the growing electricity demand in uh, Mauritius. But also we witness a fuel switch between HFO, heavy fuel oil and landfill gas and also imported biomass. Now looking at both constrained um, scenarios, first of all, when looking at the 35RE uh, energy um, regarding the integration of renewable energy, what we can see on the left uh, in terms of difference in generation with respect to the baseline scenario, we witness uh, an earlier phase out of fossil fuel um, of HFO to integrate um, imported biomass and also waste to energy uh, between 2025 and 2030, but also integration of landfill gas at the end of the modeling horizon. As for the uh, 30 GHG scenario with respect to the BAU, the baseline scenario, what we can see is deeper cuts in uh, fossil production than in the 35RE uh, scenario. So if you look at the y-axis, you can see the difference in, in terms of um, efforts to actually um, satisfy the constraints. Uh, so we can see, um, sorry. So we can see that um, there are deeper cuts required in the 30 GSG scenario to uh, satisfy the constraints, but also to accommodate for the growing electricity demand. And uh, by the end of the modeling horizon, um, coal is replaced by landfill gas and to some extent uh, offshore wind. Now looking uh, to the power generation mix of Rodriguez Island, well, we can see that uh, the most obvious thing I, I think we can see is that um, fuel wood plays an important role in the uh, energy transition um, of Rodriguez, be it regarding energy, uh, climate energy targets or climate targets. Um, and also um, the BAU naturally integrates uh, renewable energy uh, thanks to fuel wood and solar PV. And we also witness uh, fuel switching between um, HFO and onshore wind uh, to achieve emissions reduction targets. So by the end of the modeling horizon, a variable renewable energy in terms of solar PV and onshore wind are expected to penetrate the power generation mix at a rate of 45%. Now, looking briefly at the CO2 emissions trajectories, what we can see here is that, um, so you have the 30 GSG scenario, which accounts for emissions in uh, red reductions in uh, CO2 emissions. But then what we can see is that both the AU scenario and the 35RE 
actually account for increases in CO2 emissions. So we do um, observe that the RE targets, uh, the current RE targets set by the government of Mauritius do not, are not compatible with uh, the nationally determined contribution pledges of the Republic of Mauritius. And that's mainly for Mauritius Island. Uh, when looking at Woodridge Island, um, although the, the uh, compared to the BAU scenario, there's a decrease. I mean, uh, sorry, from the reference to 2019, there's a decrease uh, in CO2 emissions, both in the BAU scenario, but also the 35 RE scenario. When comparing that to uh, the 30 GHG scenario, what we can see is that there are more stringent uh, reductions in CO2 emissions when a constraint is put on the level of emissions that are allowed in the model. Um, switching to the economic impact, so in terms of MPV, just uh, saying it out loud, but um, regarding the differences uh, between the 35 R and B BAU scenario, the differences were not uh, substantial, they were uh, negligible, but then looking at the 30 GHG scenario, uh, both are slightly more expensive for Mauritius and Rodriguez. So looking at the figure difference in undiscounted investment costs with respect to um, the BEU scenario, I mean, um, what we see is that the 30 GSG scenario is uh, sensibly more capital intensive than the BEU due to the deployment cost of uh, landfill gas and also onshore wind. Now, you moving on to retreat. Only. Yeah, okay, just... thank you. Thank you. Uh, now, moving on to Rodrigues, uh, what we can see is that investment requirements in BAU and the 35 RE are similar, there are no differences. But again, the 30 GHG scenario is substantially more capital intensive than the BAU scenario due to the deployment of onshore wind. Now, moving to the conclusion, uh, what we did in the studies. Uh, um, put into perspective both energy and climate energy targets and see what are the impacts on the future uh, evolution of the power generation mix. So one of the key messages here is that RE targets currently set by the government of Mauritius are not compatible with the ROM's commitment to a Paris Agreement. And we do advocate that these RE penetration targets could be revised upwards. Uh, as we have seen, solar PV, biomass, landfill, gas, and wind are critical energy technologies for the clean energy transition in the Republic of Mauritius. And that, of course, due to constraints on the level of, GHG, of CO2 emissions, sorry, emissions reduction targets would require more capital intensive investments. So we advocate uh, for Mauritius to focus on CO2 emissions reduction efforts and design um, adequate policy packages for climate mitigation. So what we're going to do next is uh, carry out a comprehensive sensitivity analysis and key parameters to deal with uncertainty. And most importantly, as regards the biomass potential, because it plays a central role, particularly for Rodrigues Island. Um, we're also going to carry out a sensitivity analysis as regards the technology specific rates and social discount rates. And to uh, complete my presentation, um, I think one of the central questions of my thesis is uh, finally, um, essentially what is the role of energy transition in, in uh, mitigating energy vulnerability. So what we're going to do is use the key outputs of the ROM times model and go back to the energy vulnerability index that we developed and see to what extent that ongoing energy transition um, process in Mauritius will help achieve uh, energy vulnerability mitigation. So thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions, I will um, gladly answer them. Thank you very much, Anna. Uh, it was very nice to hear your presentation. And um, I guess people can use the, the chat. There is a question there which you can answer in the chat. And then we can